so we presented in a poster the first interim analysis of the Bileev study. This is a phase two single arm trial essentially uh, with two different treatments. So it's not randomized, it's uh, actually selected by prior treatment. And really what the goal of the study is is to evaluate the efficacy and toxicity of the PI3 kinase alpha-specific inhibitor alpelacib, now approved in combination with fulvestrant for the treatment of metastatic hormone receptor positive breast cancer with a known PI3 kinase mutation based on the results of Solar 1. Uh, we wanted to evaluate in this particular trial what the efficacy and uh, toxicity was of alpelacib in combination with endocrine therapy in patients who'd received prior CDK4-6 inhibitors. In Solar 1, only about 3% of patients were exposed to prior CDK4-6 inhibitors. So this is really a, a need for the uh, oncologists and patients to understand efficacy and toxicity in that population. Uh, because we knew that this would be a more heavily pretreated population, uh, we allowed patients to receive either fulvestrant or uh, letrozole in the trial population. So you could have received either of those hormone therapies before and have progressed on them, but it couldn't have been your last hormone treatment. So you had to switch from your last hormone treatment. If that was fulvestrin, you received letrozole. If that was letrozole, you received fulvestrin. So it's a very mixed population of patients, and we don't yet have the data on which patients had already progressed on the endocrine therapy they were on in by leave. The patients all had to have documented evidence of a PI3 kinase mutation, uh, and then they were placed on alpelacib in combination with that chosen endocrine agent. Uh, we actually just uh, did the first interim analysis, and we'll have more data for ASCO in 2020. But what we were able to show was response rates that were very, uh, I think, reasonable and similar to what we would have expected from the data from Solar One, which was quite nice because it does uh, suggest, again, very early, and even in a patient population who are clearly higher risk and more endocrine resistant, that uh, the PI3 kinase inhibitor maintains its efficacy. So that was exciting. Uh, we don't really have progression-free survival data yet because it's too early. Uh, we know that people stayed on therapy for a reasonable amount of time, so that's good. And then in terms of toxicity, we saw data very similar to what was in Solar One, but a much lower discontinuation rate. Uh, interestingly, I think this is uh, largely because if you know a drug works, you keep people on it. They also weren't randomized, which is helpful. Um, and I think the awareness of how to manage the toxicity of alpelacib is continuing to improve over time. So what we know about management of the toxicity is that the key thing to understand is one, rash, and using antihistamines preventively appears to have a big effect. And in fact, the label for alpelacib uh, notes that patients who took antihistamines in the trial, although it wasn't a requirement, had less rash. So that's good. In terms of hyperglycemia, it is a real toxicity and a class effect for PI3 kinase inhibitors. So what we uh, are working on is actually having uh, good guidelines about managing hyperglycemia in our patients. We know that patients who come in with borderline glucose control are more likely to get that toxicity. Thankfully, it doesn't involve much in the way of serious toxicities, which is encouraging. Um, and then diarrhea is usually manageable uh, pretty easily. There's actually a number of groups that are working on different ways to try and manage the hyperglycemia, including things like the keto diet or low carbohydrates. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. But I think that you know this is a, clearly a very effective class of drugs. Uh, Pelisib is the first approved PI3 kinase inhibitor, so an exciting step forward uh, towards personalized and precision medicine for breast cancer.